I'm filming you, Tyler. Range Rover Sport L494, how to mount a next base dash cam. We are gonna do a super quick video to try and show you how to fit the dash cam quickly with our wiring kit. First, I'm sorry, we're gonna to have to do two minutes of classroom stuff, okay? So join me here, and we're just gonna do the basic classroom stuff, just to explain some of the wiring. So, right, next base dash cams, here we go. So we need to give the dash cam power. Now, one cool thing about the next base is it does have a battery built in. Um, I'll put the spec of it on the screen, actually. And now, can you remember how many, it's like 30 minutes of recording yeah. it can give you. now. So the idea is that as you're driving, you want your dash cam to record your skillful and excellent driving and catch all the other Muppets doing stupid things on the road. That's the idea. And that's easy. When the car starts, you get an ignition power, it goes to the camera and you record. Now, what you also want, and one thing that the Garmin does, sorry, the next base does, well, that's a bit of a slip up, um, <laughs> is that it has the ability to turn on and you have to turn it on in the software a parking mode and it comes up with a little p on the screen and then if anybody nudges your car so they reverse into it while they're doing some shoddy parking maneuver it will wake up the camera it will use its internal battery and it will record the footage of that damage for you hopefully we have designed right now when you get a next base camera you have a option to plug it in a cigarette lighter and in the range of a sport that's in the center console or somewhere and you've got to route this all up around your windscreen in your airbag pillars and, and that and that's a kerfuffle basically and you've got all this wire but it's it's sort of easy to do and many people do it but it's untidy and they also do give a usb lead and you can plug it into a usb connector now, the thing that seems crazy is you want to mount it at the top of your windscreen in the middle and on the Range Rover Sport, in that overhead console, you have ignition live, you have battery live and you have negative. So rather than trying to find the power from somewhere else, we thought we would make a loom. You've tangled this up beautifully, Tyler. So <laughs> we have designed a loom and it gives you these three power outlets, okay? And where the black is negative, the red is battery positive. It is live all the time and the green is only live with ignition. Now, you can wire any dash cam up and follow this video as you like. You can buy this loom. But bear in mind, if you connect anything to the battery positive that doesn't have a very good sleep mode, you will go on holiday for a week and you will come back and you will have a flat battery. Right, so. You can, so with this loom, you can connect it to the next base dash cam hard wire kit. And this is a little bit of witchcraft in that this little box here takes the 12 volts. Now remember the car is 12 volts nominally and the USB output is five volts. So this little box here creates 12 volts to five volts, but it also has a sleepy mode in it, I'm led to believe. And if the input voltage drops and we can test this and we'll do another video if the voltage drops your battery voltage drops below like 11.8 it will go no you keep your battery power for yourself to start the car so this does have it now the drawback of the next base kit is and i am talking to the guys at next base in the uk is that the hard wire kit doesn't come with an inline fuse so if you buy a hard wire kit and you buy our tricky power takeoff loom you will also need and inline fuse because the fuses they supply with this go into your actual fuse box. They're the piggyback fuses and we're not plugging into a fuse box. So we don't have that option. Right, so you can buy this, you can buy the hard wire kit. Now we also do our own um, power loom here, which we will sell pre-assembled. So this is gonna plug into the overhead console. It will send all the signals through and just take off the ignition live and the earth. It will send it through a fuse. It will send it through a DC to DC converter to a USB and you get the USB lead. I haven't got it here, have I, Tyler? We'll find it. And it just plugs in and plugs into the camera. Okay, as if by magic, the lead appeared and we can then plug this in there and then we can route that over the headline and peek it out and then that will plug into the mount. It's easier to see this now. So that is gonna plug into the mount. Like, if I get this right, 
I got it wrong. USBs. Right, USB, yeah. We love USB-C, don't we, Tyler? Because yeah. that can go in either way. Right. Um, that then, and then we will then, the camera will magnetically dock onto there like so. So that is what we are going to do. We are going to sell, we are going to use this loom. I do want to use the next base loom, and I am going to work with next base because I think it will be slightly superior to R1, and it does have the battery save. This does not have battery save, which is why we've wired it up for the ignition. Is that enough schoolroom stuff, Tyler? Yes. Yes, get in the car. Right, we are in the car, enough classroom stuff. So we need to take out this overhead console. Is this the same as the yep. Defender? So we need to go in at the side here. For, I think we should be able to find a little bit on. Let me, can I go in one bit? Right, and, right then we need to go in this, the side here. And you can so, see there's a little groove there which you could get that in a bit easier. And it's held in place by these spring clips. You got those on the camera, Tyler? More Q, extra light, or should I spin oh, it around a bit? Uh, I'll sort this. Hey, yeah, right, so better. you can see those spring clips there, yeah? So, and they dock into this little, I'll put my, they dock into this little window here. So that's all your, all that's holding. And at the front there's two pins, and I will, I will show you those after I disconnect. So this is the cable we're going to use. Now on the top of it, if I just get those out of the way, you can see there's a little press tab that I have to press down in the middle. Now, before you do that, yep. we're going to suggest something, aren't we? Yes. Ooh. Now, the best practice when doing this would be to disconnect your battery. And I've done a video on how to disconnect your battery on your Range Rover Sport, and I will put the video... In the skylight. In the skylight, up there. Right. Um, the other thing is, you could disconnect the fuses, but the battery will be the safest way. Disconnect the battery negative terminal, which is in the boot. Now, we have done this multiple times and had no problems, but I'm going to do the whole disclaimer best practice thing. You should, when you're unplugging electrical connections, disconnect. There will be no error messages. There will be no airbag lights. There will be nothing, but it's probably safer if you're keen to disconnect the battery. Good point, Tyler. Well presented. Right, so before you do that, right, then I'm going to press that little tab down, and he takes a bit of wiggle in this one, and he's, he's straight out. Right, so let me just show you some things. So that is the little tab you have to press down there, look. You've got to press that down and then extract it. On the Defender, we have to it's sort of wiggle it a bit, so don't go just parking it too hard. Right, the other thing I wanted to show you are these two, there's these two little tabs here and here, and they fire into the little grooves here. So you can't pull it down from the front. That's why you have to like pull it down from the back here. Right, so there you go. So this is where we are gonna, our connector is gonna fit on here. Now, when you're doing electrical things, I'll, sh I'll show you, I'm um, right, but don't, don't plug this in just yet, okay? But that is gonna go in there and that is gonna go in there. Now, the reason I'm suggesting not is that it's always better to make your full circuit. Now, certainly, you can. Okay, are you there, Tyler? Yeah. So, certainly, if you buy the loom off us, do not connect this into the circuit with the loom with the wires not connected to anything. The problem with that will be if you short them together or do anything before it's connected, you are going to be in trouble. Right. Sorry about that. Um, so. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to route the cable. We are going to make the electrical connection last so we've got all the circuit. Right, so we've just moved the console out of the way, but you don't need to disconnect all of it, okay, just so that you can see. And what you can do is if you get one of these super shatterproof rulers, you can put it in, and you've got to go right in this corner. You see this little corner here? And that there is a wire there. And what do you reckon? It's better to go below the yeah, cable. below the wire. There is a wire, so you'll feel a wire, but go below the wire... Okay. And then just poke that through, and then with a bit of with a bit of wriggling, you will see it come through the headlining. Okay, now you can either choose to pull it back or continue pulling forward. I'm going to go for the pulling forward route. So what we're going to do? We got some tape here. Oh, my cable's got stuck. Right, and I'm going to tape that cable. You could have done that before you poked it in. Might have been easier, but I wanted to show you. There you go. I'm going to try and put the next bit to make a sort of slopey front on it so there's not a sharp edge where that front of that connector is. And what we've got to try and do then is, is gently feed that through, pulling and pushing, and see if we can get 
that ruler and that connector through. Tyler assures me there's room. Now I might just pull, I can see it at the front, I can see the tape there, Tyler. Yeah. If I just pull that, there you go. Right. So we've got that there. Miracle of childbirth. Yeah, that's all. For those of us that have witnessed such a miracle, Tyler. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, so we have that there. Right, so we're all ready now to connect. So let's dig out our loom. So our loom, the USB, is going to go into here. It only goes one way. That's it. And you could put a bit of tape around that um, just to stop it vibrating loose. Um, the other thing is that might vibrate up here. So what we've now got to lose. We've got enough length to get the dash cam on. But we could do with losing some of this excess into into some of this cavity up here, couldn't we, Tyler? There we go. Let's get let's got rid of that bit. Plenty of room. Uh, I'm just trying to think where I can get rid of that. There's more room back there, aren't there? Yeah. Can I can I go over the top of this? Look at that. There you go, there, Tyler. He's gone over the top of that, and that's we've got a lot more room over this side. Let's get all that up. Right. Again, now you could put a block of foam because he he might rattle in there, so yeah. it's probably good to get some sort of a tape him down, or... tape him down, velcro him up, get some sticky pad, sticky up, back up plastic, you. whatever you want to do. Right, is that maybe right? you like the rattle. Um, right, here we go. So ch -ch -ch, I'll get Tyler to do that afterwards. So we are now all ready to to connect, aren't we, Tyler? We're all ready to put all this back on. So we are going to reconnect our speaker, which you won't need to do. So I'll gloss over this. Right, the first thing we need to do is connect this end, so that's that looking in there, into that plug. It might get a bit hard to see now. Hopefully okay, it's a bit self-explanatory. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it is foolproof to that in that regard. Right, now we, we are probably okay to plug in now because the, the, we've got the circuit of the DC to DC converters on there. So they're going to make sure that's clicked and plugged. Then you've got to get the front two prongs in. Okay, and we've just got to make sure we don't trap this 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 cable now. We've got, we've got to make sure we've got room for all that up there. And then, pop, pop. And these all back in. So we now have a live feed. Snap that back in. All that, one little wire. One wire. But it's neat. We've got no trailing wires now. And now, every time the ignition comes on, this USB will come live. Now, what we now need to do is connect the camera. So we have the camera. But more importantly, we have that little magnetic base that I've lost. I'll put it up there, doesn't matter. Right. So we will get a wipe and clean the windscreen generally. Now, where you position the dash cam is there are certain regulations in certain regions that it mustn't be in your view. So it's probably best to try and get it as far behind. It might be better to put it over this side, over the passenger side. Um, we put it on the driver's side, but it doesn't matter. You can do the same theory. Um, but you want to put it out of the windscreen area. But what you don't want to do is stick this on and then only to find out that the they've got a very wide angle view that you find out you've just got a view or half your view is eclipsed by some of this window black area. So what we're going to do now is we're going to link our phone app to the to the camera. We're going to, oh, in fact, we don't need to link the phone. No, this camera's got, got a screen. Well, Tyler's looking at me like, what are you talking about? So let's shove it on. Shove it on, right, remove this. There you go. Right, alcohol wipe. Yeah, we'll get and we can work out the position first, can't we? Right, so this is how the camera is gonna sit, like like so, okay? So we can now play with our camera and see where where we want it to go. There you go. Oh then that's gonna <laughs> that give you enough Right, so you can see here on this on the left hand side of the, the camera you can see the so we need to go we need to go out of the way of that. There you go, it's, it's timed out. But we need Smart to go battery. pretty much there. And then, I mean, the trouble is we could do with doing that. I Let me have a look. I'm, I don't want to go too much in the way. Let me have a little play a minute. I think I'm going to end up going right at the top here, Tyler. I think, that, I think that's fine. And that's well out of the way at the top. Careful you don't see this, this bit here creeping on. I think I'm going to go there as far up the top as I can. Okay, and then I've got the best view and it's not obscuring my view of the road. But again, decide before you do this, the, the process for feeding through on the other side would be exactly the same. 
Right, we are going to get a wipe, clean this, and then we're going to go stick this on. Right, we have a alcohol surface cleaning wipe sachet thing, and we can wipe me now. There we go, we go all around that. Let's get it nice. Right, and while that's drying, we can pull this off. Okay, but make sure that's dried fully. We tried it the other day and it was a bit wet. It didn't really work too well, does it? All right, and so we know roughly where we're going. Let's make sure we've got... And what I'm going to suggest to do, actually, is let's plug this mount in here. Which way around have I got it? Yeah. Because it's going to be easier to get it in now. And that should now get some power to it. Right, there you go. So you get it with the cable coming out to the right. And again, we can tuck that in. Right, let me just see if I can power that on. There you go. Proof concept. Ignition comes on. Right, and it's just this little bit on the side I'm looking for again. As high as I can get it. There we go. That is my best position of a dash cam yet, Tyler. I bossed it. Done a few of them. Right, so there you go. And the, the wire's just neatly found its own way. There we go. That is not in any way distracting the driver's view. We can still operate the sun visor. There we go. So that is it installed. You've then got to install your app and do all the other fun tech stuff. Let me turn that off so it doesn't beep. But there we go. I hope that helps you. So my recommendation is we to use the next base loom. If we can get it with the inline fuse. We've also done this other one that's ready to go now. There you go dash cam next base dash cam and you can also use the gopro the garmin mini sorry the garmin mini i suggest you look at our defender video and i'll put the link here now there um and you can see and, and i go into a lot more explanation about the wiring it's quite a long video but the actual overhead console is the same actually um and so if you want to fit the garmin take a look at that one right good luck with your dash cam fitting